You cannot fully separate size and strength. Hey, everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. I thought I would chat with you guys and gals a little bit about this today. Um, and look, when these come up, we are talking about in general, we're not talking about the occasional, extremely rare genetic freak. Okay, because I promise you, you're not them. Like just statistically, you're not that person. Uh, because if you were, you would have hit a 500 squat your first year in the gym while weighing 175 pounds, okay? So if that's not you, then don't worry about it. Like you, this, this video will still apply to you. Uh, so that being said, you know, this topic comes up and I think there's a lot of confusion because people see bodybuilders um, and then they'll, who maybe aren't at a certain strength level and they'll see powerlifters or strength athletes who are. And here's where this creates a lot of confusion. Uh, because when we look at it in the lab, <clears throat> We know that neural drive and technique and all this stuff only accounts for about 10% of our strength. The rest of our strength for the 99.9% .9 of the population, barring some, some rare freaks like John Hack, is a function of your muscle cross-sectional area relative to insertion points and limb links. Okay, So much so... And then I'm going to discuss why it appears there's the illusion of otherwise. All right, so much so that when it's put in a lab, there have been studies done to where they can go to national level powerlifting meets and the researchers have taken a bunch of random competitors, run them through a DEXA scan, and based on calculations in the DEXA scan, just measuring the physical muscle mass and limb lengths, they can determine how they're gonna to total. In other words, they can take those 10 people and determine in order which one's gonna have the highest total and rank them one to 10 with at least a 90% success rate. This has been done in multiple studies, okay? And to so much so to the point where I've heard at least one expert say, why do we need to bother with powerlifting meets? Why don't we just put all the competitors in a DEXA scan and let that determine the winner? Ooh. Now, people say, how can that be? That can't be. You see these different people. So, so you take John Hack aside, and you take aside this mythical person somewhere. Because people are like, but oh, this guy over here, he benches 450 at uh, 155 pounds or whatever. But okay. And I do remember there was one guy who did have like a legit 400 bench and was at a lighter weight. But he was short. And the guy had massive pecs. And the guy couldn't squat or deadlift. He didn't have a lot of strength in other places. He was all chest and good triceps. But I would have said, but that guy being the freak that he was, he still had enormous pecs. It was still size equal strength. The guy literally had almost Arnold Schwarzenegger pecs on a 160 pound guy. So therein lies the problem with that, that thing because the pecs are the primary mover on the bench. And here's what I would say. Yeah, the guy hit a 400 or 410, but had he just gotten bigger everywhere, he probably would have benched 500. Okay, so understand that. And the other thing to think about, people don't get when you look at some of these, these lifters, like, well, how is this guy so strong versus this bodybuilder, except that the bodybuilder is not maxing. And if he did go max out, you'd be surprised. Like how many pro bodybuilders have you seen that when put to the test can bench 500 pounds? work at incline 400. We've all seen them do it. Has this not been demonstrated over and over? Just because they choose to do a bunch of light pump work doesn't mean they're not capable of moving some big weight. Okay? Because they have the muscle to do so. And then people say, what about this power? Well, maybe the power lifter doesn't have biceps and he's not ripped and he doesn't have side enhancement in the show muscles, okay? Keep in mind how many bodybuilders have fake muscle, especially in those show muscles that really set them off. How many of them had three, four inches of fake muscle in their arms and shoulders? See where we're going? Well, yeah, that's not gonna make them stronger. How many power lifters don't train the bicep? This is why I'm having to play catch up. Too many years of not enough direct arm work. But I'm pretty big everywhere else, right? So, that's the thing to think about. So you have those factors, but then when you see them next to the strength athlete, you realize they're actually smaller. It's just because 
that bodybuilder is, you know, whatever, usually short. Most pro bodybuilders are really short. I've walked in a room with IFBB pros and I towered over them and I'm not a really tall guy. Hey. And then you see them next to the big guys, you know what I mean? So people are like, how come this guy and he doesn't look like that? I right? remember you saw those and you saw those strong men next to Jay Cutler and he looked like a child next to a lot of those world's strongest man competitors and next to like that one Russian Ser Sergei when he was benching over 700 pounds. And then you realize they're literally bigger. They're taller, they're wider, they're thicker. They have more muscle in their frames. They just don't have those same proportions. They're not lean. But under there, they've got probably more lean mass. Of course they move more weight. I mean, do you not think, uh, you know, Brian Shaw is bigger than any Mr. Olympia competitor? You, you do realize he is, right? Watch to see him in a room with him. Looks like freaking Kingpin. Okay, so there is your problem. And then here's what it comes down to. Then it, a lot of it's still just the big movements. When it comes to the isolation movements, what do we know in the lab? All those other factors go out the window. When we lock people into a, a device and they do a curl or a leg extension, when they can't move or use any technique, the only factor that it matters, there's a direct correlation between the size of the muscle and the force it produces. Every single time, it is just 100%. Nothing else even really seems to matter. So a big quad will produce a stronger leg extension when you're locked in and can't use any technique. A bigger bicep and a locked in machine curl where you're strapped to the thing can curl more weight than a bicep an inch smaller every single time. Again, barring for things like arm links and stuff. But if you change the moment arm on the device to normalize it for the forearm or the cat, the shin length, it literally comes down to only the muscle size matters. And this is what's been found in the lab. So when people say size doesn't equal strength, it really, it really does. Or at the very least, it equals your strength potential. So the message of that is if you want to get strong, you should probably really work on getting really, really jacked. Okay, you want to get really, really jacked, you should probably get stronger and use some progressive overload. If you want to be really aesthetic, you need to work on your proportions and get lean. Okay, this is all pretty straightforward, but this is what the, the real world shows, the research shows. When you really look at it close and you understand what it is that you are looking at, okay? All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys and gals next time.